Okay, it's time for a serious discussion about condoms. I first became acquainted with condoms when I was 12 or 13 years old, and it was my job to put away my father's underwear after my mother had finished doing the wash and had folded it all. And in that top drawer where he kept his socks, I found in the back a box of Trojans. I had no idea what they were, but of course I was a nosy kid and I opened it. And it's got all these strange objects in it. I didn't know what they were. They were not packed in little foil packages. They were kind of just loose, loosely folded. And I unfolded one and had printed on it in blue ink. Imagine, I still remember this blue ink. To be used only for the prevention of disease. And I thought, now, what would you use a thing like this for? For preventing disease. Well, I talked it over with my other 12 and 13 year old friends and we pulled all of, all of our misinformation as we did about all things concerning sex and kind of figured out what these things were. Well, that was then and as you know, time passed, many decades passed and the next time that I had anything to do with my father's condoms was after both of my parents had died and my teenage sons and I were back in my old homestead cleaning out the attic and we found my father's army footlocker. And the kids had a great time going through that and finding his old overseas caps and things like that. And wouldn't you know, one of them pops up and they've got a box of Trojans, wartime Trojans. They were khaki colored Trojans. I don't know, camouflage? Well, I don't know why they were khaki colored. But they looked at it, they were all kind of crumbly now, because this was years after the World War II had ended. And I, that we, we looked at them and kind of laughed, and my kids said, look, Ma, some of them are missing. Some of them are missing? With my father having sex while he was overseas for three years, and my mother and I were at home. You know, kids don't want to know about their parents' sex. And and this, especially, you know, when it's your dad, and he maybe was fooling around with one of those Italian girls or something. Who knows? So I said, well, he probably gave them to his friends who needed them. And that ended that discussion. The thing is that I hadn't really been concerned about condoms for a very long time because at the time, there, there were no STDs yet. The pill had been invented, and so condoms were a part of some other part of my life. But now I'm on match. Now I'm meeting men. Now I'm dating. Now I'm having sex again. And I better be thinking about, should I be using condoms? And so I went off one day to Walgreens. I went condom shopping. I had not been shopping for condoms in a very long time. And I didn't know where to look for them. They used to keep them back by the pharmacy. So I went back to the pharmacy, nothing back there. And I finally found a clerk and I said, can you tell me please, where are the condoms? And she said, they're in family planning. She's giving me this funny look. And I thought, I'm not planning a family, I'm planning to get laid. But I went over it, I found it is family planning is this huge section about six feet long and I think six rows deep with how many? Maybe, maybe six dozen different kinds of condoms. And do you know that 69% of them are still made by the Trojan company? It's one brand of Trojans or another. There are more different kinds of, the, of condoms than I could ever have imagined. There are the, the magnum. Magnum means largest or greatest in Latin, of course. The magnum XL, the, the uh, bare skin, the, the super fine and super thin, and they're ribbed and they're ribbed and dotted and I, I, pimpled and I don't know what all. They have all and they have uh, super fine and ecstasy and double ecstasy and pure ecstasy. More ecstasy than anybody could possibly handle. And they're fire and ice. That was my favorite one. Gives you a warm and tingly sensation. Well, uh, what do you do with, with all these condoms? Because if you don't use a condom, no matter what your age, now that STDs are everywhere, 
you may end up with some weird disease, you know, and then, then you are in the embarrassing situation of having to call whoever you've had sex with and tell them that you have this weird disease. And then they have to call everybody they've had sex with and tell them that they've had sex with somebody who has a weird disease. And those people then have to call everybody. And pretty soon thousands of people all around the world have been notified that because Carolyn was barebacking, they have to make all of these calls. So my advice is always use a condom. Don't be responsible for all those phone calls. Thank you.